all right so we're back with another video so right now we're in the react project we're going to go into the guild analytics page and we're just going to modify this just a little bit um so if you saw in the last video we were able to set up the uh the new endpoint that we're going to call which is the uh, slash guilds the guild id and then slash logs and this is going to give us all of the guild logs i actually went ahead and populated the database with a, a little bit more records so we have more data to work with so what we're going to do is we're going to fetch this endpoint. Uh, so you can see that right over here inside this use effect hook, we are fetching all of the guild bend logs. We're still fetching the old endpoint. I'm going to leave this all alone for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that uh, I'm just going to create another use effect hook underneath. And we're going to go ahead and fetch the guild logs. And then we're just going to do the same thing that we did inside this callback but in the new uh, use effect hook, okay? So I'm not gonna touch anything here right now, like I said, because we want to slowly migrate into the new uh, the new logs endpoint. So what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna go inside utils, api.ts, and I'm just, I'm just gonna copy and paste this get guild band logs, and I'm gonna change, I'm just gonna change it to get guild mod logs, okay? So uh, guild band logs type, we are going to, need to modify this just a little bit. So instead of band member ID, it's just going to be member ID. And we're going to have to specify a type, which to be honest, I'm just going to do, uh, let me do this, band pick timeout. And I'm actually just going to copy this. Export type mod moderation action type. So the same that we had on the uh, the back end. Okay, there we go. So I think that's all we need to worry about. Okay, now instead of guild band locks type, it's just going to be moderation. I think, wait, what, what, what did we call it again? Wait, oh yeah, I forgot to change this. Oh, actually, you know, we, we, we actually need to change this to, uh, I thought we created a new one. No, we need to change this to mod, mod, uh, guild, mod log type yeah i'll change it i'll change it right here so we have to change it here and then we'll change it here and we do need to go to the guild analytics page and change all the types as well uh same over here okay that shouldn't really be problematic at least not for now it shouldn't really break anything at the moment perfect okay so now that we have created the the function that's going to call the uh, oh wait i forgot to modify this so instead of a uh, slash guilds slash guild id slash bands it's going to be logs we're still going to have the same query parameter from date okay so we're going to have to go back into guild analytics page and uh call this get guild mod logs so the nice thing about react is that we can actually use multiple use effect hooks uh, so, for example, right underneath here, I can use the use effect hook again. So, what I'm going to do is I'll leave all of the stuff that we wrote in the previous episodes uh, alone. And I'll just add this use effect hook over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call that new function that we just created, which is just called get guild mod logs. We pass in the guild ID and the, we're going to need the from date parameter. So, we can get that by just literally copying and pasting this part inside here okay and then we can just handle the promise the same way that we did up here so dot then and then dot catch okay so what i'll do is i'll just console log console log data let's go inside our uh let's go inside our application refresh oh is this is this uh looping infinitely i don't think it should oh the react app isn't even on right now we we didn't we didn't start the react app let's do that real quick okay so we have our dashboard started up let's go into analytics let's go into the logs so we're in the console and you can see right over here we have an array of 125 elements okay that's good uh perfect all right so now what we need to do from here is we need to go ahead and 
filter out uh, filter out all of our data into three different categories. So we need, so right now we only have kick and timeout. We haven't set it up for ban yet, but we will set it up later. So, but we do need three categories though. We need all the category, we, we need to have all the data for timeout in its own array, all the data for kick for its own array, and all the data for ban in its own array as well. Okay. So how do we do that? How exactly do we do that? Uh, well, we can just pretty much filter out pretty simply. So we can do const uh, kick data equals data filter. And we can do log dot type kick. Okay. We'll do the same thing for band data as well. And we'll do the same thing. I don't know why I, I didn't just copy and paste. Should I just copy and paste? Okay, so this will just be timeout. Okay. And obviously right now, ban is going to be an empty array because we don't have any ban data inside or that's returned from this endpoint. But kick and timeout data should have data. Okay, you have 63 elements for kick, 62 elements for timeout. Okay, obviously if you add those two numbers up, that'll give you 125. So we are getting the correct uh, data. Being, uh, we are getting the correct data filtered out. Okay, so from here, all we got to do is literally just do the same thing that we did when we called get labels and prepare data. The only difference is that for get labels, we don't need to we don't need to do anything with get labels because we're going to have the same labels for all of the data. Okay, uh, however, prepare data is going to be slightly different. Uh, so all we got to do really is uh, let's see. Yeah, all we got to do is just literally call prepare data um, for the kick data and timeout data as well as band data uh and that is it that i think yeah that's literally it so yeah i think i think i think from here there's really not much else a week to do so here's what i'm going to do uh i think what we will have to do though is because right now ban data um hmm, actually i'm trying to think guilt ban logs okay i have a better idea okay so what i'm going to do is let me actually comment out this chart over here because right now we have guild ban logs right now i'm going to have one state variable called mod logs i'm going to call this set mod set mod logs okay and uh, i will comment out this use effect hook because we're probably not going to need any more okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and render a chart when we call prepare data we're going to need to pass in uh, let's see. Originally, we passed in guild band logs, which was this, which was this over here. But we're actually going to go ahead and pass in. Uh, let's see, guild band logs dot filter. Wait, wait. Why is? Oh, wait, it's not guild band logs. It's mod logs filter. And we'll just, we'll literally just call filter and just pass in. So log type equals kick. So what I'm doing is I'm just passing in the filtered array. So we're getting all of the kick records and passing that array in to prepare data. So this will give us kick analytics. Okay, so instead of filtering over here, we'll just filter when we uh, when we uh, pass in the data for the chart. I mean, you could, I mean, what, what I was thinking originally was I was gonna filter it inside the use effect and then set it uh, and, and then just update like some kind of state variable, but that would require us to have three separate state variables. I think it'd just be better if we just did it like this. I mean, it's totally up to you. I don't really think it matters uh, too much. It's up to you though. Okay, uh, I'm not sure why this is giving me an, a solid line. Uh, let's see. Interesting. Oh, oh wait, my bad. We didn't, I forgot. We didn't set mod logs, silly me. Okay, that should. Fix that. Perfect. Uh, pretty sure this data is. Let's see. Yeah, this data should be accurate. Uh, let me see. I don't see any records for kick on. Oh, I do have two on January 10th. So I'm not sure why that didn't. That's not being rendered out. Oh, yeah, it, it is being rendered out. I thought this was zero for a second because it's all in the bottom. Okay, good. It's, it's actually working. Great. Okay. Awesome. 
Uh, cool. Now let's go ahead and render another chart for, uh, let's see. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Because we're now that we're gonna have multiple charts, I uh, let me let me do this. Let me remove this, okay? Because we're not gonna need that anymore. And I'm gonna remove this use effect hook because we're also not gonna need that anymore as well. We will obviously need get labels and prepare data, of course. So since we're gonna have multiple different charts now, so let's have a chart for uh, timeout analytics. Oh wait, that's kick. Whoops. I want timeout to be under here. So we're gonna filter out all of the, we're, we're gonna get all of the uh, guilds, or not guilds, all of the guild mod records that are timeout, okay? And if you see over here, these are the timeout analytics down here. These are the kick analytics up here. And all we gotta do last but not least to get the ban analytics is to just configure the backend to return ban analytics. Well, not the backend only, but uh, actually no, we don't have to do anything with the backend. We just have to, uh, make it so that whenever we ban a user from the guild, we just instead of instead of just uh, creating a ban, a ban, a guild ban log entity type, and save that to the database because I'll save it to the guild ban log database table. We just save it to the mod log table with the type of ban. So it's a really really simple fix. Okay, but uh, before I, I'll I'll probably do that in the next episode. But before I do that. So I'll actually do that right now since it's a really, really easy fix. So I'll go inside the Discord bot and I'll go ahead and just go inside the ban command. So instead of ban log repository, it's just going to be mod log repository. And we have to import moderation log. And so what we're going to do is we're going to reference mod log repository. And instead of ban member ID, it's just going to be member ID. So we can remove that. Everything else will stay the same. We'll just add the type, which will be ban. Okay. And we'll call mod log repository. And we'll just leave the variable names alone. So when I ban a user, what it'll do is it'll save the record to the mod log table. Okay. So let me go ahead and do this real quick. Um, I don't want to actually ban a user, so what I'll do is I'll just comment this out and also comment this out as well, and I'll leave that alone. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into the Guild Analytics page. Let's go ahead and copy this. We'll have a third graph, call it Ban Analytics, and we're going to change this from Kick to Ban because we want to render, obviously, uh, all of the Ban Analytics. And what we'll do is right now you can see on the front end, on the graph, it shows a straight line because there's no data, of course. There's no band record, so it's going to be zero. Uh, and obviously, like I said, you can configure the chart to show, so, so it doesn't show negatives. Obviously, it doesn't make sense to have negatives. So you can configure it on your own. Uh, but let me go into the guild. And let's go ahead and use the band command now. So this should go ahead and create a new record in the database for banning. You can see right over here, yep, we have one for ban, January 10th. If I go back to the analytics page, you can see 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, January 10th, we have one, and there you go. So obviously, if it was January 11th, so if, if so tomorrow, if we were to look back at this data, it would start from January 5th all up until January 11th, okay? So that is pretty much it when it comes to basic analytics. Obviously, if you have other actions that you, other moderation actions uh, that you have for your bot, uh, you can obviously incorporate that into this analytics dashboard. It's very, very simple. The whole process is just the same thing over and over again. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. The last thing that I'd probably do is um, I'd probably just, you know, let me, let me actually tidy this up real quick. This is obviously optional. You don't have to do this. But I'll go ahead and just add a flex box. Um, actually, no. I'm going to actually do this. Let me actually move this inside a grid. You don't have to do this, but I'll just spend the last couple of, couple of uh, minutes just to make this a grid. So that way we have our analytics, though. I'm not sure why it's like that right now. Um, hmm. Interesting. 
let me remove the width real quick. Okay, yeah, no, that's that's definitely not what I want. Uh, so let's see. Um, hmm, is there a way to set the width? Oh yeah, that's definitely not good. Uh, so what I essentially want is I want the graphs to kind of be equal. Does that make sense? I'm not sure why grid template columns is not doing that for me though. Let me try a hundred percent, hundred percent. I thought auto auto would work, but this is grid template columns. Maybe, maybe try 500 pixels, 500 pixels. Yeah, I know that's, that's definitely not working. Um, hmm. Might be something with... Let me see if I can move this inside a div. Yeah, that'll fix it. So let me move everything inside a div. Perfect, so now we have everything in our grid. So instead of 500 pixels, 500 pixels, we'll do auto, auto. Uh, let's see. Okay. If I do 100%, this will just span the whole page, which I don't want, obviously. So what I want to do is instead I'll do 800 pixels. Why is this not updating? That's kind of annoying. Okay. And margin zero auto. I like center that. I mean, you can configure this however you want. It's totally up to you. It seems like, uh, it seems like we do need to set a fixed width for these charts. Otherwise, it's just going to... It seems like it's going to... Uh, it seems like the, the, the width of the chart will change based off of the amount of data, which is obviously not good. I'm trying to see if there's a way we can kind of like... Huh, interesting. I'm not sure what width is, to be honest. I'm not sure what to expect from this. Uh, but you know what? I'll leave that alone for now. Like I said, I think you all can configure this however you want. It's totally up to you. Um, but I think I'll leave it like this for now. Honestly, I don't really like it like this, to be honest. But I'll, I'll let you all configure however you want. Uh, of course, we can also add labels too. So, for example, uh, title, band analytics. Goes right over here, right over here. Uh, kick channel, whoops. Kick analytics, why is it doing that? Let me fix that. Here we go, band, kick, and then uh, get this down right over here will be time analytics. Like I said, it doesn't really look that great, obviously, but I'll let you all configure it on your own time. I just want to show you the basics. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching the this whole mini series for uh, guilt analytics. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, any other suggestions, concerns, etc, etc, join the Discord server. Link is down below, and I'll see you all in my next episode. Peace out.